Hey Ape Scholars, in last week's video, I introduced a new frame review system that can help you go from thinking like a good ape student to a great ape student. A one cent summary of that video would be good ape students memorize information, but great ape students build frameworks and integrate information into those frameworks. Now, just a quick note that this frame review video series is a little bit different than the video reviews in the ultimate review packet. Think of the ultimate review packet videos as covering what you need to know as efficiently as possible. Obviously, it's important to review all the vocabulary and important concepts in this class in order to do well on the exam. But to really excel and earn that four or five, you need to be able to tie concepts together and understand how they relate to each other, especially on the FRQ section. And that's where these frame review videos can really help. They'll help you take all that information you're covering with the ultimate review packet or the videos on this channel or AP Classroom or your notes and integrate it into frameworks for each unit. In today's video, we'll practice this kind of framework thinking while reviewing the energy sources from unit six. And towards the end of today's video, I'll give a shout out to an ape scholar who tried out this kind of thinking in the comment section in last week's video. Now, just like with unit five, we have to start by taking a look at the enduring understanding that the college board suggests that we think about in unit six. Think of this as the central unifying topic of unit six and something that we definitely need to build our framework around. And that enduring understanding for unit six is humans use a variety of energy sources resulting in positive and negative consequences. And this makes building a framework for unit six pretty simple. For every energy source we encounter in unit six, this is going to boil down to three key questions. How do we extract this energy resource from the earth and convert it into a form that's usable for us? What are the advantages of using this form of energy? And what are the disadvantages of using this form of energy? Now, when we're thinking about how we use the resource for energy, we want to be able to answer a few sub questions like how do we extract this fuel source from the ground or what natural process or cycle are we harnessing? And a second key question, how do we actually convert this energy into something useful like electricity or liquid fuel or heat? Now the advantages and disadvantages are pretty self-explanatory, but just a reminder to think about both environmental disadvantages as well as economic and human health related disadvantages. Now let's run through an example of how to use this unit six frame to review what we've learned about natural gas. In terms of how we use it, first we need to remember that it's often found on top of existing oil deposits trapped underneath an impermeable cap rock and that we can extract it by drilling through the cap rock and piping it up to the surface. But remember, we can also extract it from sedimentary rock formations like shale through fracking. This involves drilling a well down into the ground and then horizontally into the shale layer and making small cracks in it with water pumped into the well at extremely high pressure. Once we've harvested the natural gas, two of its biggest uses are burning it in a power plant to produce electricity and burning it in furnaces to heat buildings. When we use it to generate electricity, we should remember that burning it produces heat, that heat converts water into steam, that steam can turn a turbine, which can then power a generator that produces electricity. Now for the advantages of natural gas, burning it releases far fewer air pollutants like particulates, socks, and NOx compared to burning coal or oil. It also releases less CO2 per unit than either of these fossil fuels. Additionally, it can be converted into liquefied natural gas and used as a replacement fuel for gasoline. As for the disadvantages, extracting natural gas allows methane to leak out of the wells, which traps far more heat per molecule in the atmosphere than CO2. Extracting it can also result in a lot of habitat loss when we clear lands to transport the natural gas or bring in drilling equipment. In the case of fracking, we could have groundwater contamination with flowback fluid if our well has a leak, water depletion from local surface waters and aquifers, and the possibility of increased seismic activity or earthquakes from injecting this fracking fluid or wastewater into the ground. And of course, it's non-renewable, so eventually it'll run out. For our thinking like a mountain section of the unit six frames, there are two types of connections to other topics that are really helpful to make. The first is to try to connect to another topic that might offer a solution to reduce the environmental impacts of this energy source. And the second is connecting the environmental problems that result from these energy sources to different topics in different units. So for example, in our natural gas frame here, we might say that switching from coal to natural gas fired power plants could be a solution to reduce acid rain from topics 7.7. This is because burning natural gas releases less SOx and NOx than burning coal, and SOx and NOx are the pollutants that contribute to acid rain. And we might connect the problem of fracking for natural gas to the issue of decreasing biodiversity, pulling in topics like 2.1 or 9.10 to explain how habitat fragmentation that results from fracking can decrease biodiversity. And remember that if you're struggling to make these kind of topic-to-topic -to -topic connections, a really simple activity that can help you get better at it 
is just picking two vocab terms from a unit and trying to figure out a way that they're similar and a way that they're different. Now there's a nice similarities and differences template you can use that's linked in the video description below. But you can also just make a quick t-chart in your notebook or on a line sheet of paper. For our practice terms today, let's use fracking and nuclear energy. First, we'll start with the similarities. They're both related to non-renewable forms of energy. And they both also require extracting a fuel resource from the ground, which could cause surface or groundwater contamination and habitat fragmentation. And finally, they're both related to a form of electricity production that should be very familiar by now, which is converting water into steam with heat, having that steam turn a turbine, and connecting that turbine to an electric generator that can produce electricity. Now, in the case of fracking, we're extracting a fossil fuel, natural gas, that will be burned, which will release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when it's used to generate electricity or heat. Nuclear energy, on the other hand, only releases water vapor at the point of electricity generation, so it doesn't contribute to climate change the way that natural gas combustion does. Now with fracking, the process produces flowback fluid or wastewater from the wells that's difficult to dispose of safely and can sometimes lead to increased seismic activity if it's injected deep into the ground for disposal. Nuclear energy production also produces waste, but in the form of spent fuel rods. These are also difficult to dispose of because they can release radiation for thousands of years. Typically, they're stored on site at these nuclear facilities in steel and cement casks that will prevent the radiation from being released. Now that we've reviewed our Unit 6 frame structure and tried some similarity and difference connections with these Unit 6 terms, it's time for you to practice. Shout out to Roy Xing Zhang, who left this comment on last week's video connecting bycatch to the tragedy of the commons. And Roy, if you're watching, I hope I got the pronunciation of your name right. I did look it up to try to be as accurate as possible, but if not, my apologies. And if you want a shout out in the Unit 7 frame review video, Video, make sure to leave a comment below with a topic to topic or term to term connection for unit six. I'll pick some of the best ones and share them out at the end of next week's video. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. And as always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.